This episode of Derpy Dragon is brought to you by Audible for a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audiobook, just head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode three of Derpy Dragon, the free-to-play show right here on Game Breaker TV. It's June 14, 2013. I'm Gary Gannon. And coming up on today's show, we got Tanks, Tanks, Tanks does a 360. Uh, there's some concerns over free-to-play on the PlayStation 4 and Rift. Rift, Rift, Rift finally goes free-to-play and there has been some drifting right here on Game Breaker and free-to-play.tv. All that more, but first, my co-host, you know him, you love him, the magic man, Mike Byrne. What's up, buddy? Hey, how are you, sir? You should have put just a few more of the rolling R's on the end of that that ad. It would have worked great. There it is. Just a few more. Just a few more. One one too short. One too short? No. Sure. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, back from E3, a week of E3, week of E3, week of E3. Lots and lots of fun, lots of stuff to talk about in the free-to-play market stuff. Uh, so I gotta say, first up, big surprise at the Microsoft conference. Not that they completely derped and tripped all over themselves, but we're gonna talk tanks, tanks, tanks. World of Tanks, Wargaming.net, uh, coming to the Xbox 360. So, um, unless you've been under a rock. I don't know, you might have missed, I don't know, but this is a, I, I think this is a huge win for Microsoft, and and a lot of people are like, but they, they announced the Xbox One, and why are they talking about 360, and um, I mean, I can only assume that we're probably going to see tanks go to Xbox One as well, but they're coming out on, on the 360 first. What did you think of this when they announced this? What do you think of tanks? I mean, this follows up on the last announcement like a week or two ago, where they're absolutely taking every single, even remotely gray item that could be pay to win out of the game now they're going to console what do you think of this big win big win it, it is a big win it's it's a very very big win and derpy's becoming like the show of speculation where we speculate something and within seven days it happens In episode one we talked about never winter would probably be launching in two to two weeks boom we had a date the next show Last week, we talked about this very topic with the acquisition of Day One Studios, and it was just a foregone conclusion. Were they developing something for a console? Did they uh, want Day One to continue work on Reign of Thunder for a console? What was that going to look like? And we kind of speculated that it's going to be World of Tanks. We just didn't know what system. It was a bit surprising at first that it was the 360, uh, but then when you think about it a little more, that kind of makes sense, too. Uh, for two reasons. One, you have obviously the established fan base uh, and the adoption rate of the 360, mm -hmm. so you have a lot more potential customers to get your game in, in their hands. And two, it kind of makes sense timing-wise when Day One was just acquired in January, February, if they were really looking to push World of Tanks as a launch Xbox One title, I think they would have had to start the port a little earlier than that, and they just didn't have the, the company with the know-how to do that yet. So 360 makes sense timing-wise, and it makes sense financial-wise and player-base-wise. It's a huge move to make that exclusive to one system. How do you Will think, it come to you... the Xbox One? I'm not so sure yet. Yeah, I mean, we haven't heard anything, So, but I, I'm, I'm going to assume that they're probably going to push that over into the one. But how do you, how do you think Tanks is going to... Um... To sort of translate over onto a console i think it's going to be fine i mean you're not going to have the the two the pc versus the xbox happening on one concurrent server so uh with xbox players playing xbox 360 players and pc segregated i think you're going to be fine the control scheme for world of tanks isn't all that complex that it requires something as massive as a keyboard i think transition wise 
uh, this was a big part of why Day One was acquired. Day One was looking for a publisher or for a partner on Reign of Thunder, and when Wargaming saw it, they said, well, you know what? What about, could you help us do World of Tanks on a console? And within days, they had a playable demo for Wargaming, and then Wargaming loved it so much that they raced out to acquire them pretty fast. So that tells me they really didn't have to do a whole lot. They just had to get this thing ready and functional. I think it's going to be fine as far as playability on a console. What do you think is going on here? I mean, a lot, do you think this is like the start of almost like the uh, free-to-play wars, um, especially on console? Is, is it going to be like... It's not something we've really seen. We haven't really seen a lot of MMOs going to console. Now there's a bunch of MMOs going to console, um, you know, and sort of like hybrid MMOs, things that people are sort of like, is it an MMO? Is it not? You got big announcements for even a bunch of titles that we don't know if they're going to be free to play or subscriber uh, based, but like, you know, Elder Scrolls, Destiny, The Division, that came out of nowhere, right? Now you've got World of yeah. Tanks. You think we're really moving into almost like the free to play wars? Definitely. And, and it's especially the exclusivity war within free to play and, it, and again timing wise it makes sense look back six seven years when ps3 uh, and xbox 360 are starting to hit their stride or just being released uh free to play was almost nothing in the west and, and so it makes sense that there was an, almost no adoption throughout that generation and now with the the rise of free to play online it, it just makes sense with all these big titles try and grab some of these that not only will your console base love but your pc gamers that are going to buy a console are probably familiar with a lot of these titles and swinging one of these titles exclusive your way could tip which console those pc gamers end up buying too so yeah it's going to be a huge battle to try and accrue bigger and bigger free-to-play titles and we've already seen it in one week of e3 I actually can't. I, I, I'm really hoping that World of Tanks really, really breaks into the esports market because I, you know, mostly because I want to see how the shoutcasters handle this. Because I, I, I feel like the best, I feel like the best way to do it is do it like golf. It's like he's turning, <laughs> he's aiming. He takes aim. He takes it looks aim. like he's yes. going for a side shot. I he, think it would be brilliant. Vibes. I think it would be brilliant if they like did it really <laughs> low key and just like really like it was like a golf game. It was just like really quiet and just like really subtle and dramatic. Because I'm like, how are they going to shout? You get two of them gonna... there. You get a color commentator that's just crazy, and then one that's trying to give you the play by play. <laughs> Shut up! He's taking the shot. Quiet in the gallery, please. Quiet in the oh, gallery. I think that'd be fantastic. I that'd think... be awesome. Somebody and if should, nobody does we, it, we, we will do it. I was going to say, maybe it. we should just do that, because nobody else is probably going to do it, but maybe we should do it. I think we should. <laughs> oh, my God. I went to the Wargaming uh, party two nights ago uh -oh. down in L.A. Oh, my God. I'm I'm still deaf. Like, I can't. 48 I'm, hours I'm, ago. No wonder your, your voice most is of Most is of this rough. voice is, yeah, last night was pseudo rough, but the night before, Zed, uh, pretty famous DJ, might be a big deal. But may, no, might not. Pretty big deal. Uh, was spinning at the party. I mean, they... They just, Victor and those guys throw like insane parties. I mean, they rented out the Exchange LA, which is like a huge club. I posted a picture of it on Facebook. If you guys want to find it, it's like, I mean, gigantic. You're just talking. And I really, I feel like they wheeled in like eight extra sound systems for the night because <laughs> you couldn't even talk to anybody. It was so loud. It was, everybody was just like, this is one of the loudest parties I've ever gone to, even at like gaming parties. They do a lot of DJ stuff, but oh my God. Ears are still ringing. Voice is still completely shot, but tons of fun, and they really know how to throw a party. I can't wait must for it. It must be nice to be tripping over bags of money. <laughs> yes, it must be. It really must be. I mean, they had, like, confetti cannons and, like, huge light show, and it was just, you know, they had tank. They had, I don't know. They had tanks at E3 again. I mean, they, they, they literally they had a tank out on the street in front of the club. Like, they drove a tank up and just parked it. <laughs> I'm not kidding, like full on World War II tank just sitting right there, like roped off tank. Uh, they're definitely a good bunch of groups. Um, I don't know, do you, do you think we'll see, I think a lot of people have been asking this and I don't want to sidetrack you know, from that, but now that, now that Wargaming is getting into, getting into this game, I know I'm going to catch a lot of flack from this. People are like, it'll never work, right? But do you think we're going to see like some <laughs> other games that are big in, in esports trying to get over on the console? And like, obviously the big one of, you know, I... I get it. 
I get the controls right. So You're going to say don't, it, don't aren't slay, you? But I, I am going to say League of Legends. I mean, oh, you know. there it is. Yeah, but it'd be, interesting, it'd be interesting to see how some of these games, if they try and transition over. Uh, they're definitely going to try. Now, whether they try publicly or not is a totally separate story, but they're probably already trying and have been for a while. League of Legends is a tough one. You, I mean, you look at it just on the top, and you say, well, it's, it's not that complex a game. There's not that many buttons. You could map some things to a controller and, and do things. But that's just a, a surface glance. It, it really becomes a problem because the, the whole movement scheme is RTS-based, and we've seen how well that's done on consoles, that whole point and click and... I can't imagine trying to skill shot with a controller. So there, there's definitely challenges there. There's definitely challenges. Could they? For sure. Can they do that? And are they fighting and trying to do it? Of course, they'd be stupid not to. They've, uh, you know, Riot in particular has probably been trying for a little while uh, with maybe the 360 and PS3. I would say if you if you're begun to my head, yes or no. I would say at some point you will probably see something with the League of Legends branding. Mm. On the consoles, but maybe not League of Legends as you know the PC game. I agree. I agree. You got to know that there's some super secret room probably at Riot where there's like a version of League of Legends running on both consoles somewhere. And I know that makes gamers just go like, oh my god, I wish I could at least try that. <laughs> Chat room just said League of Legends Connect enabled. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I don't want anything Connect enabled. Can we just break that thing already? Um, I don't want connect, connect enabled. <laughs> I know, exactly. I want that thing to turn off. <laughs> Amongst all the good news, we had a ton of good news um, yep. out of the Sony camp from E3. Uh, that's all people were talking about at E3, by the way. Like, every conversation you had was just like, wow, Microsoft really kind of tripped over themselves again, and Sony really knocked it out of the park. But one thing that they, so one thing that they said at the keynote, uh, the Sony keynote, which... Literally, from what I wasn't at on, I wasn't at the keynote, but I I've heard that they literally almost got a standing ovation at that point. Was when yeah. they talked about um, no DRM uh, on games, uh, yep. but very short while after, I think what what a lot of gamers didn't realize, maybe on the outside, was that <laughs> the fine print of that actually is that I believe, if I get this right, is that it sounds like Sony is actually saying that. Sony is not implementing DRM, but they are actually leaving it up to the publishers. Uh, they're putting that in their hands. So if the publisher so Correct. wishes to do something like that, they can. So it's not like you are guaranteed that that is not going to exist. Now, whether or not publishers do that or not is going to be very interesting. I think most publishers are probably going to steer away from it to some extent because they saw the almost the standing ovation. They realize how much people are behind this. And if all of a sudden they kind of like, take a 360 or a 180 on that, I should say, and implement it, people will have the pitchforks out, right? Reddit will be all over, just like, just bombing. Yeah, I mean, they'll take a bit of a beating. Somebody's going to try it. No no doubt, oh, sure. some company's going to try it. And, and Sony's was very interesting. It was kind of a, like, everybody was like, oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, free-to-play games. Yes, that's awesome. Oh, I'm so behind the... I'm sorry. What? What is? What's the PS Plus? I don't. PS Plus. I don't. What is that? I don't oh, know what that I, is. Am I gonna need it? Am I gonna need it? But he said free. I, uh, well, that's and uh, and that, and that's that's what I wanted to get into <laughs> next because I know everybody's like, why are you guys talking about consoles and Xbox and we are right. Uh, there is there is a free to play thing in here. So what was followed up was that a PlayStation Plus subscription will be required for online multiplayer on the PlayStation 4. And this immediately yes. raised questions for a lot of people who are, you know, watching this show in the free-to-play market is, how is this going to affect free-to-play titles? Some of them are going to try. Yeah, some of them are going to, and Sony was very careful, and they, you know, hey, we are awesome, we're not going to do it. If anybody does it, it'll be these guys, not these guys. Uh, so they were very PR in distancing themselves away from this decision on whether you were going to put them behind a, a PS Plus. Now, we heard Sony's games, uh, DCUO, they're mm -hmm. not going to, uh, Planet Side 2, they're not going to be behind the, the money gate the there paywall. with PS Plus. Right, and I, good term. And that's huge. That's very important. I think I think I, and I have to commend them. Like coming out of the gate and sort of setting the, the precedent for other companies to look at, and they yep. completely set out like, look, we're not going to put it behind the paywall. 
But again, somebody will try it for sure. I don't know. I wonder if the free to play titles benefit greatly from putting it behind the paywall. They probably don't see a cut on that four ninety nine. Is it four ninety nine for PlayStation Plus? Yeah, it's basically any, a little less than five bucks a month. I doubt they see any of that. Like I don't. I can't uh, imagine. And if they do, that's the only reason that a free to play company would have a vested interest in even trying it. I mean, they're going to give the publishers the ability to do it if they want to. But I can't imagine a company wanting to unless they're getting a piece of that PS Plus money, which they're not. So uh, there's really no incentive for a publisher to do it. One, you're locking your content when other games aren't. And two, are you getting a financial benefit out of it? If you aren't, then why the hell did you make that call? Even Sony isn't doing it. So can we really go ahead and do it and look like the good guys? That's going to be a tough call. So I think the good news for free to play uh, players out there, probably on the PS4, is I gotta say you're probably gonna see most of them not behind the paywall. Um, I think that that's probably what's gonna happen. Like you said, Planet Side Two, DC. I, I actually saw DC Universe Online playing on a PlayStation Four, and I have to say it looked awesome. No, um, chat's a little big... chat's a little bit confused here, and okay. I understand why. We had to do a lot of digging for all of this stuff through all the E3 pamphlets and everything. Uh, some in chat are saying free-to-play games do not require the PS Plus. You're correct. Sony did announce their games in particular will not require it. And they don't have any directive to the publishers that you need to make this outside of PS Plus or inside of PS Plus. But they are giving publishers the option, and that's what we're discussing here. It's not required for any titles that are known right now. However, the publishers do have the option of trying to put it behind the PS Plus. Uh, we don't know why that would benefit, here. and we don't know right. why that would benefit them. We don't. I don't. On the surface, I don't really see a, a benefit for them ever doing that. But who knows? And it is interesting that they sort of laid that out like that. They're saying they're giving them the option. Um, yep. I did see DC Universe Online playing on the PlayStation Four. It looks awesome. It looks really, really good. I'm jealous. Um, another game that I saw playing on the PlayStation 4, Warframe, looked really, really good. Uh, looked like they even, I'm, I'm not a huge Warframe player, but I do know some of it, and I was playing, hanging out with some people, and it did also look like they may even have added like levels and things like that. But, oh man. I gotta say, the PlayStation 4 especially, like on a side note, when you... Uh, stare at it at any of their games that they were showing off in the PlayStation 4 for like more than five minutes and then you walk over and see something on PS3 you're like wow like before this the PS3 <laughs> didn't look bad but now it's like holy crap like it is a huge improvement the lighting that they can do and the texture resolutions and just however the smoothness of everything amazing amazing and that was even after look, going and looking at a title that just came out today or was it today or yesterday The Last of Us um, which yeah. I just picked up, by the way. Uh, I, I was watching Warframe, and then I went right to The Last of Us, and I was just like, wow, like that's a huge, huge difference. Like the anti aliasing that they're doing on the PS4, it's just how, how everything looks just nice and glossy. Like, I mean, for PC players, nothing huge new. Like, if you've got a decent computer and you got a high end right. graphics card, you're a PC gamer, you're probably used to some of these, you know, that style of graphics, but man, it just, it was a big difference. So, um, Console only players are going to be very happy with DDR5. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I already ordered my PS4. Had to do it immediately. You realize they already, I heard. You already cannot get launch day versions of it. I found out the night after people were like, launch, ver launch day versions of the PS4 completely sold out, not offering it. Now, hopefully they make more, but I don't know. I had to just like order one and it says, we hope to get it to you sometime soon. Um, but yeah, interesting. Attention, I think, I think, Mr. Gannon. We will yeah. fulfill this order when it's in stock. Definitely a lot of free to play games like coming, uh, you know, on the online stuff. Like I said, Warframe coming to PS4, War Thunder, terrible yep. name, coming to PS4. <laughs> Guess Every time you bring up War Thunder, it's you say terrible. that. It's terrible. Nobody, and I, I can War never Thunder. remember. God, awful just, name. <laughs> it's decent games, decent, uh, you know dog fighting plane thing but just yeah bad. um i mean sony just and that's the thing i think just because sony what do you think i mean yeah there's no there's no benefit of why they put it behind the paywall so i, I just don't Chad see brought this up too and then it kind of goes with what we're talking about here uh 
Microsoft did it. Uh, more importantly, or more to the point, Wargaming did it. World of Tanks on the 360 is hidden behind the Xbox Gold membership. Yes. Uh, the Silver Free Guys, they can get a trial, but they can't do all the, the extra stuff and play the full game. It's just a trial. So Wargaming did it on the Xbox, which means there, to me there has to be some sort of revenue cut in that. Wargaming's not a stupid company. They're only going to make financially good decisions that they can foresee a, a good future with. So they're getting something out of it. Is Sony going to cough up something to any company that wants to do the same? I don't know. That is a good point. That is totally confirmed that it's gold members only will be able to play. Yeah, I was reading it earlier and wanted to, I put it in my notes and then totally forgot about it. And when I saw somebody in chat ask it, like, oh, I forgot it. I had to mention this because yeah, Wargaming totally did it. Hey, on, on the, on the, e, on the E3 note, uh, I'm sure you were watching all the news out of there. What was like, what, anything yeah. that like super impressed you uh, coming out of E3, so at least on the free-to-play uh, side? Potentially. I mean, we're still not sure of the payment model, but Arcage obviously looks stunning. Mm. Um, and, and there's news in Korea. We'll, we'll talk about that later. So uh, that looks stunning as far as free-to-play. The World of Tanks stuff was huge news, uh, even though it was 360 and you had to think about that for a minute. That was huge news for Microsoft to at least lock them up exclusively, regardless of the system. So, yeah, there was quite a bit of free-to-play news. Age of Wushu's getting an expansion pack. Expansion pack. Game just came out. They so, also yeah, won. there was quite a bit. They also announced, did they announce or not? I don't know if it was a full announcement. Maybe we, they, uh, Snail has another uh, game that they're... Yeah, um, Black Gold. Yes, Black Gold. Yep. Black Gold. Kind of yep. fantasy and steampunk. Interesting mm -hmm. take on it. One faction's fantasy based, one steampunk based. They're all fighting for the same resource. Very interesting stuff. They're built on the same engine as Age of Wushu, but not as PvP centric. Still has a lot of that PvP combat, but it's they've got a lot more on the PvE side story wise for for people that couldn't quite jump into Age of Wushu because of how PvP centric it was. So yeah, there was a ton of news. All right, we got some more stuff to talk about really quick. I want to tell you about a great deal we got going on with Audible. So happy to have these guys on as sponsors. If you guys have not checked it out, I want you to go over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. Just use that URL and you can sign yourself up with a free 30-day trial and get a free audio book. If you haven't checked out Audible, it is, uh, it's audio books on your iOS or Android device. Um, they're free to, speaking of free-to-play, I'm sure a lot of you out there probably playing maybe a little game called Neverwinter, a little free-to-play game by Perfect World. Uh, they actually have a lot of the uh, Dungeons and Dragons Neverwinter Saga books up on uh, Audible. They've got uh, book one, two, three, and four. I've uh, I've gone through book one. I need to move on to book two. These are the Ari Salvatore. This is the Ari Salvatore series. If you have not read his stuff, you really, really, really need to do yourself a favor and <laughs> download one of these because Ari is no joke. Seriously. So. All four books, you can uh, use the URL, go to audible.com slash gamebreaker, sign up, you get free 30-day uh, trial, and you get a credit for a book, and one of these uh, Dungeons & Dragons books could be yours today, and you could be listening to it. So check it out, go over, audible.com slash gamebreaker, super, super happy to have the Audible peeps on the gamebreaker and freetoplay.tv network. Uh, Mr. Byrne, I hear you're an expert on free-to-play games, that's why you're on the show. Uh, uh, um, I would uh, connoisseur, maybe mm, connoisseur, connoisseur. I'm going to say aficionado. Uh, You're going to say expert still. How, how did you? Uh, how did it? How did it? How did it? A uh, little, little, little launch of a game, maybe called uh, Arcane Saga. You may have missed that. How did we? How did that happen? Yeah, I, I uh, you know, I kind of hoped. You know, Gary's at E3. Maybe he's not watching. Uh, let me just get this out there real quick. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say sleep deprivation and understaffing. I need writers. If one of you oh. wants to write overviews, check out a game and give us the lowdown on it. Gary, what, what, what where's they, can they send that email to? Uh, submit at gamebreaker.tv, I think would work. They could probably get so something there. We'll, we'll blame them for, oh, okay. for not being volunteer you'll blame, writers. You'll blame, the, <laughs> you'll blame the writers that we don't have, uh, right, on free right. TV. Perfect. That's good. Perfect. <laughs> No, uh, there is a valid reason I did miss this, and I, I totally missed it by about three days or so. Uh, because the damn game was never called Arcane Saga. 
Uh, what was it called? called? Prius. It used to be called oh, Prius Online. I have a Prius. I love it. I love my Prius. <laughs> Needs to go for an oil change, it, but I, I think do. it's slightly different. I, really? I think it's it's more PVP. Oh, <laughs> good. You're gonna hate it then. <laughs> just, well, no, I won't hate it. I'll just be terrible at it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so Prius Online shut down last year, and then that was kind of the end of it, and Netmarble picked it back up, and they developed it, and then they were going to self-publish it, and then they made a bunch of changes to it and kind of pushed it out the door as, as Arcane Saga. Totally missed the launch until I saw the Steam announcement, and I was like, what? What is this? I've never heard of this title in my life. And then I dig into it and find out it's a remade Prius Online pumped back out this year. So if you're a fan of Prius, you were probably pretty happy when you saw that announcement at first. Give me a little backstory. What is this game about? What's the setting? Like, have you checked it out? Yeah, I mean, it, as far as setting, it's it's run-of-the-mill fantasy-based uh, MMO. So no biggies that are going to knock your socks off there. The two big selling points behind the game are the multi-class system where you can swap out gear on the fly and it changes mm -hmm. your class entirely. So you can have like three classes equipped, switch weapons, and all of a sudden you've gone from a tank to a DPS or a DPS to a heal or heals to a tank, all based on the way you're progressing your character, what classes you have, and you know what, swapping the gear sets. Am I, am I wrong in saying this? Isn't that what Final Fantasy X14 is doing? That is what Final Fantasy XIV is okay. doing, except there's a lot more than three options with Final right. Fantasy XIV. Right. And we've also seen that same type of thing earlier than that, even with Guild Wars 2 and some earlier titles where Switch the Gear switches your abilities. Uh, the, the other take on it is uh, PvP and combination systems where skills chain off of each other. So it is worth checking out. I would put a disclaimer on this one, though. If you were really a really big Prius fan, you probably won't like this. Why? Yeah, I thought uh, it sounded like people would be happy. What did they? What did they change? They changed a lot of the more fine-tuned settings and systems that were inside Prius, like the crafting system. Your companion, your little anima guy, used to do so many different things for you. Uh, in Prius, like you're crafting and you're gathering and you're draining of energies and things like that, and very how useful did they, companion. How did they change it? Do you feel they scale in back Arcane too? Saga? There's there's no reason for the companion to be there. All oh. the crafting has been really streamlined and easy moded and put onto the character. Uh, basically, if you didn't need the, if your character had the ability to go and gather certain resources that your companion gathers, you wouldn't even need the companion. So. Uh, so small systems like that, intricacies, the starting zones even have changed. They used to be big, bustling cities, and now they're really tiny outposts, and the game's very linear. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Arcane Saga is a bad game. If you it's never played different. Prius Online, you probably would have a decent time in it. Now, whether or not you stayed would, would be your long-term decision. But if you really, really liked Prius, this probably is not going to suit your fancy. It's changed What's a lot. How, what's the, uh, what's the, the cash shop like? Uh, what's that whole setup? Eh, it's run of the mill. There's a couple different things like the, the crafting enchants and things like that. that You could argue the drop rates in the game may be a little too low, forcing you to use the cash shop. But all in all, it's nothing that black and white is play to win or mm -hmm. pay to win. But there is that gray line where people are going to argue just like most cash shops. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, if you guys haven't checked out uh, Prius, maybe you want to give it a trot. Uh, Arcane Saga, check it out. Go over free to play TV and check it out. Uh, other big news this week: Rift, little MMO that you are slightly in love with, sir. Uh, I has gone free to play. No idea what you're talking about. Yes, you love the rifts, <laughs> which I, I do, do as enjoy well. the rift. Yeah, so they uh, you you've jumped back in, I believe, with the Game Breaker crew, and you guys have been drifting a little bit at night. With drifting? Oh, I don't know. It's code. <laughs> what is? I don't even know what that means. I don't know well, Mr. Gannon, I've we. I mean, if you're talking about Troy, who does random live streams pretty much daily at any given Every time day. in the afternoon. Yes, one then to three. Is he one to he's three? He's done that. I don't know. I mean, he does it at different times, so you really should be following the Twitch channel so that you just get a little message so when Troy goes live. And maybe, maybe. Some of the Game Breaker crew and I have 
played some Riff maybe late at night and, and streamed it this week, but I have no idea what you're talking about with drifting. <clears throat> so, looks like they are having some uh, some success with the free-to-play launch. Uh, I think as we're doing the show live right now, I believe, like they are down for maintenance, and they are actually yep. even uh, expanding and adding shards, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yep, and causing controversy. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh, of course. In North America, it's no big deal. They're uh, breaking North American servers into two clusters, and they're adding one PvE server and one PvP server. Remember, Tryon's got uh, a bit of a unique uh, situation where they built a lot of the back end themselves uh, for, for Rifts. They didn't, they're using their own proprietary stuff. Individual server population in Rift isn't as important for stability as overall cluster of servers. So they put a bunch of servers in one cluster, and that population is what can start causing problems and queues and things like that. So they're breaking North America into two clusters, putting a, about a half dozen servers in each, and adding one PvE and one PvP server. Great. Transfers, they'll have to work all that stuff out, but not, not too big a deal. Our EU friends aren't getting that type of love yet. They probably will. Uh, but for right now, the EU had one of their more established high pop servers, uh, shards, broken into two. So rather than getting just some new shards put in, they had a very established one busted and broken into two. And there's quite a lot of people upset about that because it's breaking apart the population sure, that has sure. been playing for two years now. Do you think this uh, is? I this assume is due they're the going to add they... servers. Do you think this is due to the fact that they possibly didn't uh, anticipate as uh, much of a surge as, as they have they have gotten? I mean, is the world just completely bustling right now and just jam packed? I heard there's queue times and everything, which yeah. not a bad thing. I'm going to say that's a kind of a good thing right now. Yep, and in particular in the EU, I've seen uh, community members and I'm sorry, community moderators comment that you know I'm we're sorry we're working through this. We have the largest population in the game right now that we've ever had. Now, that's just wow. the EU talking to the EU audience, so I don't know if that pulls out globally. But, yeah, I mean, there's queue times. Free-to-play players, I think last night, uh, our own queue sat mm -hmm. in a queue, uh, and she was like four or 500 meta. in that queue. Yeah, how about that? Uh, I'm a patron, so I kind of go into my own queue as a subscriber, and when I hit the patron queue last night, I was like 252 and had about a 40 minute wait anyway. Wow. Wow. And that's with wow. a sub in the patron queue. So yeah, they needed to do this. So a lot of people back in the Rift. Um so you, you Rift has kind of always been sort of your go back to game, hasn't it? Like yep. you go away for a while and then you 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 go back. What are the major changes like, you know, for somebody who may have uh played a while back, you know, and maybe been a subscriber and they, maybe they've been away for a while. Does anything stand out? Is anything really new and exciting? There is. Uh, most of it's at uh, max level. So if you got to 50, did your rating and things, and you didn't have much to do, and let's say you avoided Storm Legion for some reason you didn't pick it up, Storm Legion, in my book, is probably, and uh, try on just cut that check right now, uh, it's probably one of the best MMO expansion packs uh, across the board. There are a few Did you just hear that, it, but it's up there. Did you hear yeah. that? It, and that's my opinion. One of the best. I agree. Storm Legion was is jam packed yeah. with content. Like there is so much content in that expansion. It's it's unreal. Yep. Uh, so not only do you have that to look forward to, and I'm not going to go through the expansions contents, but then you have patch 2.3 that came with the free to play conversion. That not only did they convert it to free to play. But they also threw in a huge new uh, zone and a bunch of artifact quests and fun stuff to do in that zone. New storylines, new quests uh, called the Dendrome. They also put in uh, three new open world raids. They put in a number of strongholds. They put in another 10-man raid. They put in new dimensions and new gear. So even if you played in Storm Legion at launch and you've quit, the free-to-play conversion should bring you back to take a look at that stuff too. It's just, mm -hmm. They keep adding a ton of stuff. How is the uh, how's the ca how's the cash shop looking? That's the sticking point for a lot of people, um, and mainly it's because and Trion was very upfront with this uh, before it ever launched. They said, "Hey, we're going to put gear in the shop," and the reason we're going to do it 
is we anticipate that those of you that have played the game for a while might want to bring a friend now that would not have previously paid or uh, subscribed to play, but will now that they're free. And you can mentor down and catch them up. So the leveling experience, if you want to buy a potion to boost your experience, go for it. But those higher tiers of gear, you know, for from expert level dungeons, raids, things like that, that you may not be able to find necessary groups for because the level cap's been raised. So they are including gear. Some people have a big issue with that. It's not the top tier. If, you know, tier C is the best, then B and A are the gear that's in the cash shop. Um, and you don't even have to buy it with credits, which is the cash shop currency. There's a ton of different tokens and things in the cash shop that you can earn through daily quests and things to buy that way. You can even use in-game plat in a lot of cases. There's very few things that are restricted to just credits. Oh, Some people don't like the idea. Some people don't like the idea of equipment being in the cash shop at all. I don't have a real problem with it because there is that one more tier that if I get it in game it doesn't matter what you buy I'm better geared than you. Right. But like you said what's really important so so the gear is attainable in the game through playing the game but it's all and it's also attainable through other forms of currency that mm -hmm. you can accumulate from playing the game. So there's nothing exclusive to the cash shop that, that takes your actual physical dollars and gets you some amazing gear that's going to be best in slot. Definitely not. Right. And even if you don't want to spend cash you can get credits, which are the cash shop currency, through the Rex system. So if I want to sink some money into Rex, I can buy Rex. It sits on my account. And I can cash it in and make it credits instantly if I want to and spend the credits. Or I could take the Rex into the game, throw it on the auction house, trade it to you, Gary, sell it to you, Gary, for some plat, the in-game currency. Mm -hmm. You get the Rex you break the Rex apart into credits and go buy that exclusive credit-only stuff if that's what you really want to do. So you can farm up enough things in-game that would entice me to sell you my cash shop currency. So there's a conversion really like a there, too. No, it, it gives you plenty of options. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as anything you want, you can get it without paying cash, but paying cash is just a hell of a lot easier, and try yes, on banking is. on that. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. They're banking on those whales. All right, now I have to ask. So, how would you rate the game overall? Um, you know, about playing all the free-to-play titles that are out there right now. Where do you put this one? Are you? Is this get the uh, the Mike Byrne stamp of mm. approval? It definitely gets my stamp of approval. Uh, it's like I said, it's been my fallback game for a long time, and I'm having a blast playing with a, a bunch of the the game breaker peeps. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. Except try on, you need to start shelling out some more hellbug mounts. People are getting pissed. Um, People are getting pissed. Mainly us. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's definitely in my top five free to play titles right now. And I don't think there's going to be too much argument there just because of the polish. The argument's going to come in if you're just sick and tired of tab targeting based games, then Rift really isn't going to do anything for you because you're going to be so disgusted with tab targeting. Uh, but I think it's going to make most top five of uh, 2013 free-to-play lists, and it's probably in my top three. Very, very good. Check it out. Go over and uh, start playing some free-to-play Rift, or oh, get in that queue at least. So definitely, definitely, definitely want to check out some Rift. Uh, another game I got to check this out uh, from Tryon. Uh, they're I'm going to be the publisher. very jealous that you played this. No, I, I will. I will clarify. I did not play it. They would not let oh, me touch okay. the keyboard. I tried. <laughs> believe me, I got really close. I got really close. And I was like, my hands were almost out. They were like, oh, no, 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 no. no. We're just giving a demo. <laughs> so, no, I did not play Arc Age. I really tried to. Arc Age, uh, the big news this week, though, coming out was that they're going free to play in July mm -hmm. uh, in Korea. Uh, yep. So the game has been out for a little while over there. Tryon is uh, publishing the game here in the uh, U.S. They are working on, you know, uh, localization and all that kind of stuff to get it ready for here. Um, for those of you who don't know what Arc Age is, um, I'm very excited for Arc Age. So Arc Age is what we would call more of a sandbox MMO. Um, yes. it's, it is it is very much based around players uh, really inhabiting the world and and making things happen in the world. It is not very quest heavy at all. There may be some quests and things to do. 
but really what the idea is that they give you a really like a, I know when I say the word tool set, some people will like, you know, misinterpret that for the wrong thing, but they basically, right. there's resources. The, the whole idea is that, you know, uh, the closest thing I could kind of describe it to is say Eve online, but in a fantasy setting, not in space. So what they want, but and what I mean by that is that at the end game, they want the players to carve out what the end game is, which is a lot of PVP. Yeah. It's a lot of territorial control. It's it's guild houses that your uh, uh, opposing guilds can come in and burn down. Like it's a lot of warfare. Um, they're doing a lot of really cool things. Um, some of this stuff that's knocked me, just you know, uh, blown me away because I, I was like nerding out for like a week watching all the Korean videos, like dissecting them. Like this is months and months ago, long before I even got to see this demo. So when I saw the demo, they're like, "Does anybody know anything?" I'm like, "Yeah, maybe." I kind of <laughs> know something. <laughs> I'm um, a little bit worried when this comes out. Why? Uh, because I, you you got sucked in. We were worried about you with Age of Wushu. Uh, uh, you you this, got sucked has, into that sandbox for a little while, this but has, you this didn't has step in the quicksand. No, this, this has more potential is for a quicksand. Full quicksand <laughs> sandbox. So I'm a I little mean, worried get, we might lose you for a while. <laughs> I mean, so I get excited about these little things, right? And this is just like, you know, you can watch, actually you should go watch on Game Breaker TV right now. There is uh, the entire demo that they gave me, uncut, unedited, right there. They, they didn't let us play the game, but we, we recorded it. Uh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she's, I think, one of the producers or executive producers. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm very sorry. I forgot your name. Um, giving the entire demo and walks you through it. You should go watch it because it's really worth the watch. The world is beautiful. Um, and, and I really, it's a high level overview. You know, obviously there's a lot of press there that don't know much about the game and they want to start introducing to them. So for, for you guys out there who really been paying attention to it, you may not learn anything, but it's still worth watching. <laughs> um, things like, you know, resources, right? One of the first things yep. you're going to do in the game is you're going to want to build a, a boat. And I mean, not like a rowboat. I'm talking like an awesome, awesome, like ship that how cool is this? Cause this doesn't happen a lot of MMOs when you, so for, oh, let me back up. I'm all scattered. <laughs> I get See, ex I'm excited you're, about you're Arcade. Stuck in the quicksand already. <laughs> I'm because I'm excited about this, and I, I really am. Arcade really has. Uh, I'm all excited about it. You have to gather resources to build the boat. Now you have to go chop down trees, get wood. Right? You need X number of those packs. You chop down a tree, turn it into a pack. You put it on the ground. Right? There's your resources. You have to literally put the pack on your back and carry it to the boat. And you walk slower. Yep. Now here's the other thing. If you're just one person and you're like, you know, building your like inventory, your packs, you put them on the ground. If you're just like kind of a lone wolf and you're doing this, well, if I come along and see you doing this and you ain't got no friends, <laughs> I can just pick up your packs and see ya. I can just take your stuff. So I love that kind of stuff. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to kind of get like, you know, 10, 12 people maybe together and all do it at once. And then all go out there at once, carry your packs, birth your ship. Another cool thing, <laughs> when you make the ship, so it's not like, it's not like you become the ship. So if, if we, if we launch, say like my ship, Mike Byrne comes on there, you have stuff to do and you're, you're still your own avatar. You need to like man right. those cannons and like shoot at stuff and do things. It's not like, not like we're just flying a ship or something. Check it out. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of, I'm sure you've watched it. Yeah. Quite a bit. Have... It's, it's super exciting. I mean, it looks really good. If you're into the sandbox, just like you, I mean, Age of Wushu was your thing for a little while. You were like, oh, I love this. I can kidnap people. Are you kidding me? This is awesome. You uh, can this burn this down is dangerous houses. because with the sieges and the stronghold stuff that they're doing at the end game, uh, Victoria Voss, that, that was the producer's name from Tryon. Yes. And that's the video that, that everybody should check out. Really cool. So but, the big, and the yeah, big difference yeah, is we're going to lose you for a little while, <laughs> maybe a little while, just a little while, but yes, the end game. So it's not very quest. If it, there's not really no. quests, there's not, it's not a theme park. It's really about players inhabiting the world, doing their own thing, playing the way they want to play. Some people are just going to be like gatherers and getting you resources. Some are going to just craft and craft. Some are just going to wage war. There's going to be player cities. You're going to be able to build things and like, you know, and hold them. And when you build them, there's going to be warfare and siege warfare. It's, I can't wait for this game to come out. I it's think it's intense. actually going to be really cool. It's going to be really interesting. To see it's that. intense. Uh, they actually opened up for beta signups while everything was going on at E3, right? Yeah, it was really quietly, too. It was just like, oh, hey, guys, we're North American beta. Go ahead, sign up. Very, very quiet. Nobody knew. And then when the announcement came out, everybody was like, this can't be true. So more time was spent confirming 
that it was true rather than just going and signing up for beta. Um, so now with the news, so obviously the big news, you know, going free to play in Korea, I mean, do you really think there's any possibility this is going to be a sub-based game in the U.S.? All right, it's it's the show of speculation, I guess. That's what it There's is. There's no way this gets a sub in my book now. Yeah, um, Tryon's already done the sub game with Rift. They have their experience there. They went the buy-to-play route with Defiance. And forget quality of game for a minute. Just mm -hmm. talk about the company's experience with models. They did the sub. They did the buy-to-play. They were looking at doing free-to-play with End of Nations. God knows if that'll ever see the light of day now. I think this is going to be their first foray into how can we get free to play off the ground from the start to be a successful model for us because we're banking on we're going to have to do it in the future anyway. Let's use the buzz that this title has to to launch it and get us free to play ready. So I think this will launch free to play in North America. I agree 100%. So go on over, sign up uh, now for the Arc Age beta. Uh, if you're looking for the sandbox, the MMO, it is definitely something I'm excited about. Yep. Michael Byrne, follow him on the Twitter at MagicMan1. And of course, come right over here to uh, freetoplay.tv and check out Follow all that live stream. You never know when Troy or any of the free to play Game Breaker people are going live. You never, never, never know. We're going to try and work on a schedule in the next few weeks, though, so we get something a little bit more consistent. But right now, you got to pay attention. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Gary Gannon and follow. God, I wish I had the free to play Twitter in front of me. What's the free to play Twitter? F2P TV. F2P TV. He is not Gary Gannon. That'd be me. Uh, yes. <laughs> come on over to freetoplay.tv. Check it out. And yeah, keep uh, keep an eye on the live stream. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you next week on some old Derpy Dragons.